Hey everybody, Johnny here. This is the fourth video in my hair braid tutorial for the new hair system in Blender 3.3 Beta. In this video, we want to take a closer look at the roots of our braids. When a new hair object is added, the first node tree that's added has a curved surface to form node. This connects the root of the curve to the object that we've added it to and helps keep it connected. However, the problem is, we duplicated this curve and then shoved it all around using our multiply hairs node. So the tips of the hair aren't actually connected to the scalp anymore. We need to find a way to make them connect to help with the realism of our hair. To do this, we're gonna take the first point of each curve, find the nearest point on the scalp, and then push that point to that point on the scalp. So let's jump into it. Starting from where we left off last time, I'm gonna add a new geometry node modifier. I'm gonna stick it right after the hair control. The hair control is where we created all of the extra hairs. And so this is the point at which they need to be connected to the scalp. I'll click new here, and I'm gonna call this node connect hairs. Since we wanna set the position of some of our control points, we'll need a set position node. Now we need to determine which points we wanna move. Well, it's gonna be the first point of each one of these splines. So we'll need to use the selection input to only select the first control point of each spline. We can find that using the spline parameter node. The spline parameter node has this output called index. That's each control point's index on its own spline. So if every one of these splines has 10 control points, the control points on each of those splines will be numbered 0 through 9. So what I can do is pull out the index and then add an equal node. I want it when the spline parameter index is equal to 0. That'll be the first point on each spline. So now that that's connected, if I were to change this offset, you'll see that only the first points of these splines move. That's exactly what we're wanting. The next thing we want is to figure out where they need to move to. Well, first of all, we want them to move to a spot that is on this sphere. So we're gonna need a reference to this sphere. We'll add an object info node, and from the input of our node tree, we'll drag down to the object input. That way, here on our modifier stack, we can choose what our scalp object is. In this case, it's Icosphere 001. Now that we have that, we can transfer positions from this sphere into our node tree. I'll do that using a transfer attribute node. The source of our attribute is going to be the position on this sphere. So the source will be the geometry. The type will be a vector because it's a position. The type of transfer is going to be nearest face interpolated. And the attribute we want is going to be the position we can leave the source position alone. If we drag this attribute over to the position input, we'll see that the first point of each one of these hairs immediately jumps to the nearest point on the sphere at the surface of the sphere. Let's go into rendered mode to see it a little better. So this is the node with the attribute being transferred, and this is the node without. That looks a lot better. However, there's one more little trick I think we can do to make it look just a little bit better. You'll notice here that some of the hairs are sticking straight out of the scalp, while others are coming out at pretty high angles. And the hairs themselves only come in direct contact with the sphere, so if it's leaned over quite a bit, you might be able to see the bottom of the curve. And you really don't want that. Instead, we want to be able to sink these hairs down into the scalp just a little bit. Now we have access to the normal vector at any point on this sphere. If we simply duplicate our transfer attribute node and add the normal node, this attribute is now a point that's exactly one unit away from the top of the sphere, pointing out in the direction of that face. Now, one unit is going to be way too far, so we want to scale this down to something smaller. If we go to our vector math node, we can change the mode to scale, and we can give it a much smaller scale, like 0.1. So now, this vector is no longer a normalized vector away from each face. Instead, it's 0.1 in length. Of course, we don't want to go away from the scalp, we want to go beneath it. So we want to subtract this 
from the position that we had already calculated. I'll change this to a vector subtract node and subtract unit vector. Immediately you can see that the hairs are now standing up straighter and that's because the beginning points of each of these hairs is now sunk below the surface of this sphere and it's not exactly at the top. So now that this is done, let's toggle this on and off to see the difference this makes. There's with it off, and there's with it on. If you want a little extra control, you can drag the scale out to the input. This will allow you to adjust how deep into the scalp that the hairs go. So that's it for this one. Hair setup is one step closer to giving you a lot of control over these braids. So I hope this is inspiring you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.